In this exercise, you will add subtotals and totals to your order list report. You will be modifying the 4GL to add subtotals and totals to the data that's being sent from the DVM to the report engine. You will also be modifying the report design document, adding new containers that are going to hold the subtotals and totals. To start off with, you're going to have to open your GRW class project workspace. The first thing that we're going to be doing here is we're going to go and we're going to modify the store order dot 4 gl we're, uh, we're going to modify the report block so that it accumulates those order totals and those subtotals and then sends them across when it sends every row across. So I've opened up my 4GL file and we're going to navigate down to the report block. Now right now in the report block we have defined report to underscore data. To this we need to define the variables that are going to hold our subtotals and our total amounts. So let's go ahead and add those in. The first one we're going to add in is we're going to add an order total. We'll call it order total and we'll make it a decimal of uh, 10 comma 2. We need to also be gathering the store total. And we also need to be gathering the report total. Now this is one of two methods that you could use to be gathering the totals. We're going to be uh, gathering them on a row by row basis instead of using the sum method which we also talk about in the slide. So right now I've added my order total, my store total, and my report total variables. Now I need to go and actually have them be used. So underneath my format, right now I just have on every row I want to print data x. What I need to add first is I need to initialize these variables. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to add on this first line, we're going to add a first page header. On this first page header, we're going to let the report total equal to zero. This initializes that report total variable at the start of the report. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a before group of data.customer dot store num. So every time the store changes, we want to reinitialize that store total. So we're going to let store total equal to zero. And now on the next one, we need to have the before group of order num. So it's before group of data dot orders dot order num. And we need to go in here and let the order total equal to zero. So I have it to where my totals are being initialized before we need to start gathering the count. So before the report starts, my report total is equal to zero. Before the store, every time a store number changes, I reinitialize the store total to zero. And every time an order num changes, I initialize that order total to zero. And now on every row, I need to actually gather the information and start accumulating these totals and then send that information across with the data row. So on every row, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to let my order total be equal to the order total plus, and now I need to add the quantity times price for any specific item for that item row. So it's data.items.quantity times data dot items dot price. I also need to accumulate the store total, so let store total equal to store total plus and then it's going to be the same the same amount. So I'm adding the data dot items dot quantity times the data dot items dot price. And lastly, we need to accumulate the report total as well. So I let my report total equal to the previous report total 
plus and then my data dot items dot quantity times the data dot items dot price. So that's gone and it's uh, it's gathering my information. So on every row, I'm going ahead and accumulating the order total, the store total, and the report total. And now when I send my print statement across, I can do a printx of data dot star, but now I'm also sending across the order total, sending across the store total, and I'm sending across the report total. And at this point, we have the report uh, totals or the subtotals being defined. We initialize them in the first page header and before group statements. And then on every row, we go ahead and we accumulate the values or and then we print use the print statement to send those values across with each row. This should be all that we need to do. So we go ahead and save our file. The next thing we need to do is go ahead and add these uh, subtotals and order totals to our order list report. So let me order the open the order list report. Let me go ahead and rebuild this application. When I rebuild the application, again, it's recreating that RDD, and I expect this message to pop up asking if I want to use the new, the new RDD file. So I'm going to say yes. And now if I go into the data view, what I expect to find at the bottom is my order total, my store total, and my report total. So now each time a row is being sent across, it's sending across whatever the value is at that time for the order total, store total, and report total. Well, we want to add those to our order list report. Let me go ahead and, and uh, open up my report structure. If you remember the report structure, right now we have our page header with its information. And then when every row is sent across, it's going ahead and print out the table row. What I need to do now is add new containers to hold the order total information, to hold the store total information, and to hold the report total information. Uh, the way I tend to do it is I tend to use the double click method. Again, you can drag and drop as well. Uh, but let me go to my toolbox. And what I need to add first is I need to add what is a stripe or a mini page. The first thing I'm going to add is the stripe that's going to display the order total. So let me go ahead and click on order num the order num trigger, and then I'm going to double click on the Stripe mini page. You can see that, let me collapse this, for the group order num, it's going to be printing out on every row, and then the last thing it's going to have up here is my mini page. Let me rename this so it makes more sense to me. I'm going to call this my order total Stripe. Now inside of this order total Stripe, uh, first thing I'm going to do is put in a little spacer like we have here. What I could do is I could copy that spacer and just paste it, inside of that order total stripe. Um, you'll notice that each spacer needs to have a unique name. So the fact that it's named spacer underscore one underscore one doesn't really mean a whole lot to me. I know that it's a spacer. And because I copied it from a previously existing one, it's gone ahead. And if I look down in the text property, I can see that it just contains a single space. So after that spacer, the next thing I want to add is my uh, label or my caption for that order total stripe. And what we can do is let me grab a form field title object. I'm going to go ahead and double click on order total. It puts that order total caption in there. Um, if I wanted to, I could go down again into the text property for it. And I could change it to say, to include a colon, to include a space after it, whatever it is I want to display there. And then the last thing I want to do is add the actual order total itself. So I can click again on order total stripe. I can go ahead and select the, the field or the value icon, and then I can double click on order total. And so now it'll print out that order total. Now I'm going to repeat this for my, my other three or my other two totals. So on my store num, 
I need to go and I need to add my stripe. Now it's at the same level as store as oops, storenum. It's at that same sub level. I'm going to rename this to say store total stripe. And then that store total stripe, we know that we want to start with a spacer, so I'll copy and paste. We know then that we want to have the caption. So I'm going to add the caption. We know that we're going to want to also have the value field itself. So store total value. Last thing I'm going to do is at the very end of my report, I want to have another stripe. That stripe I'm going to rename to be report total stripe. Again, I'm going to copy and paste one of my spacers. I'm going to go and in my data view, first grab the label. And then I'm going to grab the actual value itself. So at this point, if I look at my GUI, I have the on every row, but then every time an order changes, so when the order changes, I want it to print out an order total stripe. When the store number changes, I want it to print out a store total stripe. And at the very end of the report, I want it to print out a report total stripe. Let's go ahead and save this report. And next we'll run and verify that these totals appear as we expect them to. Uh, before I do that, I'm just going to change the text value on the store total to include my colon and to include, whoops, and to include a space. And then I'm going to change my report total again to include that colon and include a space. So now I have the report structure, I have the pro I have properties, I have them in tabs now, that'll make it easier to go back and forth. Let me go ahead and save this, and next we'll run and verify that it appears as we expect. Now in order to save this, I need to go back to my project workspace. I need to go into my source, and inside of the report main, again, I want to change it from store list one to run the order list one as that's the report we modified so let me do a quick change here go ahead and save it let me go ahead and rebuild the application and then we'll go ahead and execute that application now you can see it's brought up my order list report Every time an order changes from one o from order one to order five, every time an order changes, I have an order total, and every time my store number changes, I have the store total. And if I navigate to the end of the report, you can see that I have a report total when the report finishes. Now the formatting of this may not be like you like you wish. Perhaps you want the orders totals to be on the right hand side instead of the left and that's the kind of uh, thing we're going to get into when we get into the next module about formatting the report layout.